My name's Omar and I am a fourth year medical student and I have made a very similar video before but this was back when I was a second year medical student with no clinical experience and I was very much talking about how to revise for exams pre-clinically so before you are based on the wards and before you kind of cycle through different rotations. Since then I have been over a year on the wards, seen multiple different specialties and had my first ever clinical medical school exam. So I'll be telling you everything I learned throughout this period and don't forget to check the timestamps in the description to navigate your way through this video. Before we get into the part of the video where we discuss study techniques and revision timetables, I want to talk to you about how to optimise your health in preparation for the exam. By optimising your health, I mean getting a good night's sleep, having a varied, balanced diet, getting regular physical exercise and limiting your caffeine intake. By following these steps, you will have improved alertness and concentration, improved mood and reduced anxiety, as well as a better cognitive function. However, doing this is more easier said than done because during exams, I'm not gonna lie, the last thing you're thinking about is your health, but here are a few tips to get you going. So in terms of having a varied diet, it can be very really stressful to think about going grocery shopping and preparing a large meal during exam season, but you can always, for that period, invest in something like HelloFresh. This is not sponsored, but I found that HelloFresh isn't that more expensive than doing a grocery shop, but it does save you a ton of time because the food and ingredients get delivered to your door with really easy to follow recipes. So basically saves you time from trawling the internet for healthy ones. So yeah, it's a huge time saver, but it's actually a really nice kind of stress-free activity to do during exam season to break up your working day because you can just for half an hour just unwind by making a brand new tasty recipe. Following on from that physical exercise, now working out is not something that I spend much time on at the best of times, let alone during exam season. But remember, simply just half an hour is enough to improve blood flow to the brain, to improve your sleep quality. Seriously, post-gym sleep is unparalleled. So if you're struggling to get a good night's sleep, definitely go to the gym or do some sort of physical exercise. And I don't know if any of you guys get this, but I have the back of an 80 year old, especially during exam season. I have chronic upper and lower back pain from being slumped at my desk, but going to the gym is the best thing to loosen all those tight muscles, get blood flowing to those areas, reducing inflammation, definitely recommend it. And it doesn't have to be going to the gym. It doesn't have to be going to the gym for two hours, literally just half an hour. Once again, adequate sleep is very crucial for helping you consolidate new memories and learning. It will literally help you memorize things better. So try to get seven to nine hours sleep. I know this is easier said than done, but seriously, an all nighter is not worth it because you will not remember the things from your all nighter. But what you will remember is facts you learn consistently for period of several weeks whilst you're getting good night's sleep. And the last thing is caffeine. Now caffeine in moderation is great at improving your mood and alertness. However, I can do you one better. Now during my medical school exams, you may remember I heavily relied on my monster watermelon cans. And if you've seen my exam vlog video, oh my God, I cringe at the memory of me being so jittery, not realizing at the time, but then watching the vlog back and realizing I was speaking at a thousand miles an hour. I mean, I looked really intense. I'll put in a clip here now. I have had lunch. I have had every possible meal you could have. I have checked every possible social media, watched every possible video on YouTube and I just cannot sit still. And not only that, caffeine, especially at that level, is a crazy laxative, which just along with the stress of, in, of exam season, just wasn't a match made in heaven. So I was so happy when Magic Mind reached out to me with their productivity shots. Now I wish I could go back in time and have these during exam season, but I love mixing my productivity shots with some frothy milk and vanilla syrup, or with some apple juice over ice, or simply having them on their own for a nice kick of alertness and productivity. Now, rather than containing caffeine, which doesn't actually give you energy, it just stops your brain from acknowledging when it's tired. And then when those receptors are finally activated again, that's what leads to that massive caffeine crash. Instead of doing that, they only half activate these receptors, meaning you get a nice subtle increase in your alertness without it all coming crashing down. It also contains nootropics found in matcha, which helps with productivity, improved concentration and a reduction in impulsivity. So check out the link in the description and use the code IMARA20 for 56% off your first subscription. Crazy deal, they're so good. The packaging is so cute. They really do work. 
They give me such a nice boost in my energy, boost in my mood. I really recommend them. So let's move on to how to plan revision. Now I want to talk to you about a retrospective revision timetable. And this has been one of the biggest changes to my revision compared to how I used to revise when I was at school before medical school. So a retrospective revision timetable is one that consistently changes depending on your progress rather than the more common but less effective prospective revision timetable in which at the beginning of the exam season you plan out the next like six weeks and stick to that schedule. The problem with these prospective revision timetables as I said before is that that you equally weight different subjects so you will divide up your time depending on the subjects that you have and you will find different subjects harder than others so there's no point spending the same amount of time on subjects that you find easier than the ones you need to spend more time on. So this is what I do, I separate the stuff I need to know for my knowledge papers to what I need to know for my OSCEs. So for my knowledge paper I'll basically either get one from the university or make one myself, a list of all the conditions we need to know and I'll go through and highlight them in red if I don't know them at all or if I really am not happy with the amount I know of each one. Yellow, if I know some bits, perhaps I know diagnosis and investigations, but not management. And green to ones that I can afford to somewhat not review before the exam and I'll be okay. And then I'll label them all. And what I'll do is I'll create different study slots for one week and divvy up the red topics between those study slots. And at the end of each study slot, I'll review, right, is this subject still a red? Is it a yellow or is it a green now? And then as you go, the reds will slowly turn amber and the amber will slowly turn green. What was good about this is that I really like psychiatry and I felt quite confident with these topics and they were all green. And it stopped me from revising these and forced me to revise the subjects that I didn't like because honestly, it wouldn't have made any real difference to my grade if I had focused more on psychiatry. So definitely recommend the retrospective revision timetable. So now let's move on how to revise for your exams. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is you need to start as soon as you start placement. With medical school, there is simply too much content to revise simply in the run up to exams. You need to start from day one. That doesn't mean that if you don't hit the ground running once placement starts, it, it's all doom and gloom. No, but it is something good to aim for. Let's think about how do we start preparing for exams, right? There are three ways you can revise for exams, but there's only one way I would recommend but remember, everyone is different, so it's very important that as soon as you start placement, you trial each one to make sure that you find the method that works for you with enough time to stick at it and start seeing results. The first one is handwriting notes or uh, rewriting lecture notes. That is a very common thing that people use at uni. For medical school, especially when you're in your clinical phase, don't do this. It's completely unfeasible to handwrite your notes, there's simply too much, and rewriting lecture notes is so passive, you're never gonna remember facts. The second method is using Anki or Quizlet, so writing your own cards. This is what I did for my third and fourth year exams. Really time consuming, difficult to balance making new cards to doing old ones, but really good for specifically catering what you need to know to your university's learning objectives. Third one is PassMed or QuizMed, um, any other question bank. These are good because they give you case-based questions, which is what you'll be assessed on in the real thing. Massively time-saving because the questions are ready-made, but maybe unrelated, so you may spend a lot of time doing quite niche conditions or things you're unlikely to get assessed on, which might be kind of a waste of time. And also, I find with past med, I don't, I, I feel like no one talks about this, you cannot do past med if you don't know a subject. Fine, past med is good to do at the end of a rotation, but Day one of the rotation, you know nothing. What I'm transitioning to, to revise for my medical school finals, is a mixture of Anki and PassMed. I'm gonna make Anki notes on the basic conditions, just to remember any fact recall questions. So, what are the symptoms, what is the management? And then I'm gonna be doing PassMed to kind of put that into play, because in reality, you're not gonna see a patient and they're not gonna say, okay, I have acute kidney injury, what are my symptoms? It's the other way around. So a mixture of the two will mean that I have enough knowledge of the conditions to be able to do the question bank questions because the question bank questions will more closely emulate what the real exam will be like. So I'm planning to do a hybrid of both and I know a lot of people do this. Another way people combine the two is any questions they get wrong on PassMed, they make Anki questions out of that. And I might try that out as well. And a bonus tip, I had a clinical teaching fellow gave me such a good tip and I use this in the run up to exams. What I do is that I would make a massive mind map on my whiteboard, you can do this on paper, with a common presentation. So for example, a breathless patient, a patient with abdominal pain and 
what I do is that I'd make a mind map of all the possible conditions that could be causing that presentation. So for example, abdominal pain, you could have something like renal stones and you could have an ectopic pregnancy. Abdominal pain is so varied. And what I do is I'd list all those out and think, right, so the patient's coming with abdominal pain. How do I rule in or rule out each of those things? So ectopic pregnancy, right, they're coming with abdominal pain, draw a line for ectopic pregnancy, right, I'm gonna rule it in or rule it out by doing a pregnancy test, or these are the other symptoms they'd come in with. And if they do have that, what would the management be? And this was so good for exams because once again, this goes back to how in exams, you're assessed based on presentations, not this is the condition, what are the symptoms? So it was good for me going into the exam, right, I can see in the question stem, the patient has leg pain. What were the conditions that I was preparing for? So now we're gonna move on to the next section, which is how to prepare for your OSCE exams. OSCE exams are very different from knowledge papers because they test you in real time on real or simulated patients, how to take a history for a variety of different presentations, examinations, such as an abdominal examination, a cardiovascular examination, a neurological examination, and procedures such as uh, venipuncture, cannulation, catheterization, a digital rectal exam, many different components and within those they test your communication uh, your clinical reasoning your professionalism and your ability to interpret data plain and simple examiners want someone who is slick and confident preparing and doing well at an OSCE and impressing the examiner is identical to passing your driving test so if any of you guys failed the first time think back to the first time you, you sat your driving test where you were like really nervous you, you looked like frightened and anxious the whole time. You took a long time to do each thing and respond to different cues. You weren't able to be that comfortable with the examiner. You probably didn't talk to them very much compared to the last time you took the, the time you were successful taking your driving test where you did everything like it was second nature. Like you didn't even have to think about it. That is what examiners want because that shows someone who's done this a billion times. And how do you get good at driving? You get good at driving by driving all the time. So, OSCEs. As much try on place, it's very hard on placement because you feel quite nervous and it is a lot of pressure to do it on real patients. But try and just take those opportunities to do those examinations and procedures on real patients, even if it is nerve wracking. It will only get less nerve wracking the more times you do it. GP rotations are excellent for just banging out loads of different procedures, histories, and examinations and getting good at them quickly. But other than that, go to the ward in your own time leading up to exams, practice on housemates. Um, practice on anyone and everyone. I 100% recommend the Geeky Medics website, Oski Stop and Oski Sense. So the reason I like Oski Stop is because they give really good step-by-step -step instructions on how to carry out each examination and procedure, just like Geeky Medics does. The reason I like Oski Sense and Geeky Medics is because you can actually get Oski stations that are ready-made. In particular, what I love is that you get mark schemes. So now I live in a house with non-medics and they were predominantly who I practiced each OSCE station with. So I was able to give them a mark scheme. So even though they had no idea what I was talking about, they were able to tick and cross things off. So it's so good if you're rising with non-medics to give, or even if you are, to give them a mark scheme so they know what to look out for. So you can revise basically wherever. So those are all my tips that I have for exams. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or if you have any other tips that you'd like to share with our community. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the post notifications and check out my Instagram because I do loads of reels and shorts about exams, medical school that you won't find on here. And I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your exams.